welcome to the Waste Not, Want Not podcast. I'm Philippa Ross, human ecologist, enthusiologist, author and energy healer, bringing you inspirational interviews, news and tips to rebuild our relationship with nature, revitalising our natural resources by minimising waste and maximising human potential. I trust you'll discover seeds of hope for a vibrant future that you can cultivate and transform to suit your own lifestyle so we can collectively create a world where reverence for the diversity of all life is honoured. You can find the show notes in the description and lots more about me and my work at philiparos.com. Hello Wastebusters, welcome to episode 7. Today's focus is on food. But before I introduce my guest this week, I've got a few helpful tips for you. Now, baking powder is a must-have in your pantry to add volume and lighten your baked goodies. But did you know it's a fabulous for cleaning too? A good one for cleaning your chopping board is to mix a teaspoon of it with a teaspoon of water. Make a paste, then scrub the chopping board and rinse with hot water. It's also great for getting rid of smells left on your hands when dealing with things like fish, onion or garlic. Just rub two teaspoons of the powder into your hands, then rinse off with water. My next tip involves the use of a good old fashioned ice cube tray. It's great for preparing baby food, compotted fruit, and if you just can't bring yourself to finish off that bottle of wine, freeze it in an ice cube tray, then use the frozen wine cubes to add flavour to your casseroles. My guest today is Elise Hilliam from Menu Aid in Christchurch, who's come up with an ingenious answer to the daily grind of deciding what's for dinner. The beauty of her business is that it also addresses the issue of waste, food, time and money. Welcome to the show, Elise. That is how you pronounce your name, isn't it? Yes, yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah, excellent. Thank you. <laughs> excellent. Yes, Elise is 25 and all the way from Christchurch. Um, and I'm up here in the North End and it's very sunny and yummy. I was just sharing with Elise that I'd just been to the beach for a few hours. So um, I've had a good old shower and back and um, about to dive into this lovely interview and introduce you to a, an extraordinary young woman who's taken a great courageous step to start her own um, business called Menu Aid. Um, and it's such a simple idea, as is the actual name of it, um, but there's so much more to it. How did you come up with the idea in the first place, Elise? Yeah, so um, I guess the first, the, it came out of frustration, to be honest. Uh, oh, my cool. partner, Toby, and I, we uh, used to spend days, well, hours on end on Sundays, you know, going through recipes, cookbooks, and putting together, trying to find what we want to eat for the week, putting them all together into a shopping list. Honestly, it would take us so long. And we sort of thought, there's just got to be a better way than this. We're just wasting our time here. Um, and we'd always go back to the same sort of seven recipes each week. <laughs> and so, yeah, so we thought, like, there's got to be a better way to do this. And, of course, the next sort of solution that was in your face was the meal kits. So you have the likes of HelloFresh throwing uh, free boxes at you 24-7. So we thought we'd give that a crack and check that out but we did one week and vowed never to do it again um Why is that? The, just but well, the number one thing for me was the waste that it came with the packaging was astronomical honestly i got two uh, stalks of coriander and wrapped in plastic packaging and i just i couldn't believe it and uh you open the fridge and all you see is just bags brown bags filled with you know little plastic sachets and none of it's reusable like it's all just going straight into the red bin so right uh, yeah we were horrified um and also there's no flexibility with it. it just you know if you can't cook something one night or the next night quite quickly the food will go off um and then you're just throwing it in the bin of course and it was really expensive as well it's definitely out of our budget so yeah we sort of figured like this isn't the right solution we're because like, you were a okay. uni student at the time as well weren't you yeah, we'd just come out of university. So, right. yeah, we started with, we, we, like, in my background, I studied nutrition at university. So, obviously, food is a core value for me and, and good right. health. So, I knew that we had to we had to eat well, but eating well and gathering the inspiration, even for a nutritionist who loves food, uh, I was finding it quite hard. And so, we sort of looked at each other and said, there's got to be a better solution than this. Meal kits are not the solution. And... So yeah, we, we looked around for something like MenuAid 
and there wasn't. So we thought, well, if there's not a solution, but there's a problem, let's create the solution. So yeah, we started working on menu aid. Fantastic. I mean, that's for a lot of people, that is the thing. It's actually, if you can't find the solution, what you do it yourself, there's a reason, isn't there? And it's, it must yeah. take a great deal of courage. So how long, when did you first have the idea? Cause we're, where are we now? January, 2022. So when did you first have the yeah. idea? So I think the first time we had the idea actually came in the first lockdown um, when you were forced, you know, you had to start cooking at home a lot more, take away right. an option. Um, and so we thought this is actually a great time to give this a red hot crack. So we started working on it then. But at that time, uh, I was the one coming up with the recipes. And the reason we're creating this platform is so that I didn't have to come up with recipes. <laughs> so um, we realized that there's people who are much better suited to this role. And that's, of course, chefs and recipe creators. So that was, I'm not sure, August, September 2019. And it took us until January to uh, get Brett McGregor, who, who was the winner of MasterChef New Zealand, and Helen Jackson. So she's like a food media queen in New Zealand and has an awesome blog called Food Lovers. So we got them involved January 2021. <laughs> I'm getting my years confused. But yeah, last January. Um, and for them to give us the recipe inspiration and, and yeah, the recipes. And then we got our team, uh, built our team with Will, who's our software developer. So he does all of our tech for us. And then Charlie Rose, she's our sort of content creator, um, food stylist, photographer. She does all of our social media channels, helps us with marketing. She's honestly a superwoman. <laughs> so awesome. that sort of completed our team. Yeah, which was awesome. So that was wow. January, January 21. Yeah. So when did you actually launch? Uh, so then it took us from January, we were all working on it part-time. Um, it took us until September to sort of get it to a place where we'd tested it, you know, we'd tested the product with friends and family, we'd gathered feedback, talked to the market, saw if it, there was actually a fit for it. We saw there was a massive demand for it. Uh, so decided to launch our first initial offering in September, which was incredible. The uptake we got was just so, so exciting. And it was such a reward after you'd been working on something for so long. To then send it out to the public, it was very nerve wracking, but to send it out and people just loved it. It was so cool. We got a really good uptake um, at the start and the growth's just continued ever since, which has been awesome. <laughs> You've got a, um, a chef. Um, so what part do you play in it? Yeah, so originally with the chefs, what I worked quite hard with them on was creating what we call the recipe writing guidelines. So that's saying we figured out who our target customer was and what that person would want in a recipe and then so who is your target market so our target market is well we've we've named her we've given her a bit of a description so her name's sarah she's 42 uh she's got two children seven and 12 who are constantly nagging her asking her what's for dinner um she's really hungry for inspiration in the kitchen she's slightly budget conscious but is okay to spend money on quality food um, yeah, and she's her main goal is, and you know, Sarah's happy when the family's happy, so we're there just to help make Sarah's life easier. <laughs> Which, once we figured out who that was, it made it really easy. So then I'd say to the chefs, okay, well, these are the people that we're feeding, so these are the nutritional requirements for them, and are sort of the minimum standard for for our recipes, which has been awesome, and they've been really good every now and then. I have to sort of you know, put in light substitutes or swap things out, but that's fine. Most of the time, both Brett and Helen are very healthy chefs. It's it's not like I'm, you know, having to teach them something new. Um, yeah. They've been awesome. So yeah, we worked really hardly on that recipe writing guidelines. Um, and now I review every single recipe that comes into the comes into us um, and bounce back on anything. Um, yeah, and now also I'm, I'm sort of leading the charge, I guess, with the team. Um, so doing a lot of the operational stuff trying my hand at a bit of marketing. Um, and but our big focus at the moment is really building that team culture. Um, the founding team is so important to us. Uh, they've all got such brilliant ideas and they all bring so much to the team. So yeah, that's been a real big focus for us too. Fantastic, fantastic. So um, I remember when I first contacted you um, that you were absolutely thrilled because um, you tried it out for yourself and proved it actually works, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> Can you tell yeah. listeners your, little, your story? That was amazing. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was just, that's just the beauty of it, I guess. So um, I remember, yeah, that was a week where I thought I it had been a really big week and so I kind of just went to menu aid and I added four recipes into my trolley that I liked the look of and I went through and I was like 
I think there was maybe like 40 different ingredients in the trolley and I was able to quite quickly tick off I think about 25 of them that we already had you know we've got herbs in the garden we've got pantry staples and things that the recipes always call for so we use that uh, got rid of all of those and then I just had to pop to the supermarket get 15 things and it's all in a nice reconciled shopping list it's all categorized so went through the supermarket had the shopping list is all in order it's fantastic and I was out of there in like 20 minutes spent well under my budget because I wasn't buying different things and you know <laughs> getting tempted um, and yeah it was back home and had four awesome recipes ready to go so yeah I remember talking to you and being like I'm just so relieved. Like, yeah. It's just fantastic. Yeehaw, it works. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so can you explain to the listeners exactly what the process is when you sign up? Yeah, sure. So uh, the subscription, weekly subscription is $4. So you sign up and currently you choose from a balance pack, which is four meat-based recipes and one vegetarian recipe, or the veggie fix, which is five vegetarian recipes, um, that can quite often be easily adapted to vegan. So every Saturday morning, you'll get issued out, um, we call it a pack. So that's five different recipes. Mm -hmm. From there, you can choose which ones you like, which ones you want to cook for the week, and you add them into your trolley. And from there, as I mentioned in the trolley, it puts it into a nice reconciled shopping list where you can cross out things that you've already got lying around at home, like soy sauce, herbs that I mentioned, um, any chickpeas in the cupboard that you've already got. Uh, you can swap out things that you don't like. A lot of people uh, don't like mushrooms, including myself, yet. So um, I swap out mushrooms for other things if I want to. Um, and then, of course, you can add in things that you'd need as well. So that's, you know, toilet paper. Of course, you need chocolate in the cupboard. <laughs> Good food, one. All sorts of things. As a nutritionist, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's got to have moderation treats. Um, yeah. So yeah, you can just work through your shopping list and get it sorted for you. And then from there, you've got fully flexible shopping options. So we want to give people full control. And this is really good for people's waste profile, we've found, because so many people now are really enjoying going to their butcher. You know, they get to take their own containers. They've got full control of the quantity that they're getting and they know where it's coming from. So they love taking it to their butcher, their local green grocer, you know, their local... Um, fish supplier wherever or of course they can still head to supermarkets they can do uh, click and collect or get it delivered to their door of course we've got integrations with countdown currently so it makes that process really seamless wow um, yeah so it's just about giving them that flexibility and what's awesome in the group that we kind of didn't think we would touch is actually farmers because you know they've already got freezers full of awesome beautiful meat that they are cooking with um, and they've got veggie gardens and herb gardens and all this awesome produce at home but they're just lacking that inspiration so yep. they've been using menu aid to yeah get that inspiration and then they only need to get like you know three or four things and then they're sorted so um, yeah they've been really stoked with it which is awesome. Yeah, because I tried it out for myself and I loved it so much that I actually bought a subscription for my daughter who she, <laughs> um, her and her partner and two little people. And what yeah. I loved about it was that flexibility, um, the fact that you can swap out things. And obviously, yes, you can look at your own pantry and see what you have got, do the flexibility and also the quantity size of things as well. So, you know, your, your model, um, Sarah, it's got two yeah. teenage um, um, children, but yeah. um, and they're going to eat her out of house and home. But I mean, um, <laughs> two, you know, a three and a one year old aren't going to so much, but the partner will. So, um, yeah. and that's the beauty of it. And you can add more meat, um, do less meat, or whatever. That's what I really, really loved about it. Um, and the fact that you can create your own shopping list from it as well. And ultimately, um, the purpose of this podcast is really about helping people reduce waste on many levels um and part of your inspiration was the packaging side of things so there's yeah. that element of it there's the food um the cost as well but it's also the time you know you said that you used to sit down and spend time and I know being across the old 60 year old that having small children as well I have absolutely no inspiration whatsoever having brought up two children I don't like this and I don't like that and you do resort to the same old things all the time and yeah. then and it's lovely when you go to a friend's house because they might have more or less the same 
meal presented to you, but it's done for you. It's it's done in a different way. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's the same ingredients, right? But it's it's done in a slightly different way. And you're like, I never would have thought to have done this, but I've got all these ingredients at home. So yeah, yeah. that's what we really push with the chefs, definitely. Yeah. And that, and as it's it's lovely having the chefs with that background and yourself as a nutritionist, but it's also the flexibility and the variety in it is just really, really inspirational. Um so what kind of feedback have you had from people? Uh, thank you very much, by the way. That's that's really kind. Um, <laughs> we've we've had such such great feedback. A, a real focus for us has been, you know, those early adopters, the people have, that have jumped on early, is talking to them all the time, finding out what's working for them, what's not working for them, and getting the platform where these people who are now becoming dependent on it. You know, we want this to be as we want this to be like the one stop shop for them to go to for all of their weeknight what's for dinner dilemmas to be sold yep. so um the feedback we've had has been awesome the people are loving the supermarket integration because it does make it you know jump on choose your recipes sort your shopping list and if you want to you can get it delivered to your door so yeah. that sort of seamlessness is awesome but it's actually also a lot about what you touched on people are quite shocked at how delicious the food is that they can make themselves which is so yep. cool because Often with meal kits, you know, people will make a really delicious meal, but they'll say, oh, you know, it's just HelloFresh or oh, it's just my food bag. Like I didn't really do anything. I just ripped open some packets. But yep. with menu, they're making it from scratch. And a lot of people are making it with their children, which is awesome because that's such a fantastic educational piece for yeah. them. Yeah. And kids are far more likely to eat a delicious, nutritious meal if they've had a part in creating it and they can see where it's come from so yeah that's been really cool to see that sort of involvement um and just bringing that like excitement and pride back into the kitchen and you know like you can actually provide awesome food for your family or for yourself and it doesn't have to be this really stressful experience so yeah that's really what excites me the most is talking to people like that who are like finally I feel so relieved I we tried meal kits it just wasn't right for us but we need the help and yeah this is, and it's only four dollars a week like what have you I know it's, really? it's nothing really is it you know it's a cup of coffee basically for I mean yeah. and getting your time back is priceless you can't put a, a price on it really um yeah, and exactly getting somebody else to do the legwork is just brilliant <laughs> yeah yeah and it was funny because when we were first talking to the team about it it also removes a bit of tension in relationships as well because you know kind of all weekend Toby and I would be like sort of passive aggressively thinking to each other like who's gonna come up with the recipes this, who's gonna think of recipes this week you know who's gonna do the shopping this week who's gonna come up with the shopping list but now it's like you don't have to do that you can rely on menu aid to sort it for you get all of that you know fog out of your brain and just relax and enjoy your weekend so yeah it's, it's cool. how did you come up with the name menu aid oh I think <laughs> that's a good question we originally used to menu aid because we sort of thought we want it to be something that people you know they hear and that they, they can understand that it's obviously about food it's a menu yep. and we're just here to help you so aid is you know it's like you kind of gave the relationship to first aid like yep. we're just here to help you we're here to look after you and um yeah aid you when you're been planning your menus essentially so we didn't want to overcomplicate it we actually had a massive naming um session and we came up with all sorts of different ideas i think dinda like tinder but for dinner came in and all <laughs> these sorts of different things but uh, we decided that menu aid is a lot a lot safer <laughs> <laughs> Less totally. absolutely absolutely <laughs> fantastic so so really, it's just about, I think the important thing, as you say, is you've created that solid foundation and just keep building on it and providing a, um, a loyalty and um, consistency. I think that's the important thing. And as you say, people are, um, I mean, some people may shop weekly, some fortnightly, some so the longer you do it, then you can actually start morphing it into doing a monthly shop or, or whatever it happens to be. Um, and then you've also got access to past menus. Yeah. Yeah. So any recipe, when you sign up initially, you'll have five recipes sitting there waiting for you. And then every week from there, every pack you get sent will always be in the platform. Um, and one of my favorite 
favorite features, funnily enough, is the favorite section. So um, recipes that I really love and that I know are trustworthy and that I can sort of, you know, they're easy to bang out. I will always just favorite them. And then, you know, if I can't be bothered trying to cook a new recipe, I can yep. just jump in my favorites. You can still add those to your trolley and have the convenience of all of that. Um, but yeah, you know that you've tried and tested it before because not every night we understand people are wanting to make a brand new recipe, which is fine. Um, yep. Yeah, so we've got that favorite section, which has been really, really popular too. Excellent. I mean, something that's just going on in the back of my mind here, so far as waste is concerned, um, is actually, I can remember from old um, having a roast chicken. And um, so that's one night. Then we'd have a what we, I used to call a rice mess the next night. So you'd use yeah. up some of the chicken and then use the bones to make a chicken broth kind of thing, you know. Yeah, so a, one roast amazing. chicken would go around for three meals <laughs> for the family. Yeah. Kind of thing. And having worked for child youth and family and things, I just think there's an education process for people to realize how you can use those wastes because so many people chuck them away. Um, and I'll yeah. be going to be talking to someone who does um, the composting side and food waste is massive. It is just mm -hmm. into landfill is huge. So it's also um, that's something in the back of my mind is what to do with leftovers and things like that. I mean, I always stick them in a wok or something and um, give me <laughs> Yeah, yeah yeah but and I guess like uh, you're fortunate in the sense that you you've you're educated and you know what to do with those things but like you say there's so many people that just get stumped like even as simple as cauliflower for example they come in these big beautiful leaves and yep. they've got these awesome stalks that most people just hack the leaves off cut the stalks off and forget about it but you know we're like no 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 the stalks are just as awesome so tasty and just as nutritious cut them up a bit smaller because they're a bit rough chuck them in as well and then Toby's favorite thing to do is to get the cauliflower leaves and put them in the oven with a little bit of olive oil and paprika and salt and they become like chips and they are so good. So yeah, it's all sorts of different things like that. And we're always trying to tease that out of the chefs because uh, they've got all these ideas in their head. And so we've got on each recipe is a bit of a chef's tip. So we'll always try and get the chefs to throw in, you know, if you make a bit of excess sauce, don't throw it out, you know, you can use it for this and things like that, which, um, yeah people really appreciate too. and you can freeze it I mean when you're talking about cauliflower again sometimes I will with vegetables because I'm on my own as well you know this it's hard when you are on your own you can actually yeah. I've got stuff in the freezer it's just like um lots of leaves and things for making soups so I can just go yeah. in there and pull it all out and stick in there and make a yummy stock kind of thing so yeah. that's that's the kind of thing that would be really useful for people as to again you're not wasting the food um and yeah. how to how to freeze it and it's like yeah don't chuck it away for goodness sake <laughs> yeah exactly yeah and we've got quite a cool instagram um page it's uh, at menu underscore aid and i'm often sharing different tips and tricks on there as well um oh. which is quite cool so if people want to check that out there's always you know we do lots of giveaways too but my favorite part is yeah sharing those sort of tips and tricks with people so definitely I'd love to do some um that's a great idea to do more about yeah what people can do with their leftovers or their scraps so yeah we keep an eye out for that and I think the other thing is that because you're doing it from fresh and using fresh stuff it's also seasonal so yeah. we're not um uh we're using products from our own backyard. I mean, you can extend, I mean, there's so many things you could extend it with somebody and how to grow them and all the rest of it. You know, you could have lettuce yeah. in the pot in the backyard kind of thing, but um, you can go a million, million ways. But I think, the, you know, you've got the crux of this and it's a really um, amazing idea. Um, so simple, but it answers so many people's problems. It's just fantastic. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> So you call your you call yourself a reluctant cook. So are you more less reluctant nowadays? I don't. I wonder if I'm less reluctant or more reluctant because I'm you know constantly looking at recipes and so <laughs> then when I get home I'm like, you know how they say chefs are always you know they never want to cook when they get home they just want to relax. But one beautiful thing that works really well for us is every second week we cook because we cook and photograph all of the recipes. So every second week we have this massive day in the kitchen where we cook 16 recipes. So that's that week and the next week's recipes. And so then we're left with 16 meals, which is awesome because it means that we don't have to cook for a few more days, which is great. 
Brilliant. So we'll get that on Tuesday, so I still don't have to cook, which is good. <laughs> You've got the stone up, really, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Brilliant stuff. <laughs> so it's really for all ages, although, you know, you've targeted like a 42-year-old possibly with teenagers sort of thing, but as again, they, it can be for anybody, like for myself on my own or for couples or family sort of thing because of the flexibility with the ingredients and it's not, and it encourages exactly. people to get creative, I think. Yeah. I think mean, you touched on it early, you know, you think you can't, but like, you know, as you say, in the lockdown, a lot of people did a lot of baking and things like that and realized, um, and actually you can do it. It's not that hard. It's just, you've got to experiment really. Mm. yeah exactly and just to yeah give people the confidence to give it a go again you know so many people have sort of been scarred like you say from the kids saying oh I don't want to eat this and I, I'm sick yep. of meatloaf was always the the one in our house that mum would always try and oh, do. Really? <laughs> yeah so um yeah so it is just about giving people that confidence to get back in there and, and yeah give it a go and get the kids involved it's the best way mm, the seasonal side of things so have you got any plans or are you just really just getting stuck into where you are at the moment? Where would you like to see it go? Yeah, we've got massive plans. We've got big aspirations. We um, had a really awesome session with the team the other day and we sort of all said, you know, what's your five-year ambition? What's your five-year goal? And everyone wrote it down and came back. And we're like, we've definitely got plans to take this global because once we prove it in New Zealand it's does you can take this anywhere you know like this 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 idea the what's for dinner dilemma is not just a New Zealand problem it's every no. single family you know so yeah definitely to take it global and another really exciting piece that we're working on very hard at the moment is personalization of it so um, rather than choosing between a balance pack and a veggie pack yeah you'll jump on and you'll say to us hi, this is what I, you know, you'll answer a few questions at the start. This is what I do, don't like, um, you know, this is the sort of time that I like to spend cooking. Uh, this is my budget and, you know, a few different things. And we'll start sending you recipes as we normally would, but then you'll be able to tell us if you do or don't like it. And we'll also be able to see a little bit. So we're using AI. So there's a bit of technology behind it that menu aid will actually start to get to know you and you know how Facebook ads always come up and you're like that's yeah. weirdly relevant to my life um it's sort of the same technology as that okay so, yeah 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 so the menu aid will get to know you and we'll start giving you recipes that are highly curated to you and your situation you know we know that you just like servings for one or you like servings for two because you like to cook it for dinner and then have it for lunch the next day we know that you don't like mushrooms or that you love asparagus. So when asparagus is in season, we're sending you asparagus recipes every single day. So um, yeah, that personalization piece is massive for us at the moment. It's a really big focus. So we're working really hard on that. Um, and that will be awesome because then it really will become, there will be no, no, you won't have to make a choice because, you know, we'll know that that's mm. what you're after. So yeah, that's Fantastic. really cool. And I get, yeah, the global thing as well, you know, it's the seasons of food and what's available and it's, it can be adapted to different cultures and things. That's phenomenal, eh? Yeah, yeah. And I guess you could like do that. like a cross thing because so many people like to try other cultures things, you know, and then you could have a, like a Mexican, I fancy a bit of Mexican and off you go to Mexico kind of thing. Wicked. Yeah. Yeah, it'd, yeah, it'd be so cool. So, yeah, and I guess the best part about that is we get to, bring our love of travel back in as well because of course we've got to go and understand these cultures and get to know the local people so it works well for me <laughs> you've got a hard life ahead I can see <laughs> <laughs> oh it's awesome I'm very lucky I'm, I'm really enjoying it it's it's so cool yeah but you we make our own luck and you know I've um, my background is psychology and really for me it's um, once you're in touch with what sparks you up, I mean, you started off in nutrition side of things, but mm. what, whatever it is that sparks you up, you can use that enthusiasm. For me, I mean, I was hopeless at school and it wasn't until I had it, um, my son was 18 months old, I wanted to discover about child development. So that was, took me on the path to study child development, which eventually, took me um I got my degree in psychology but I didn't set out to do it and yeah. and it's so different from school and like you you created the you found a dilemma and and sorted it because you've got the skills and for me a lot of this is about helping people find 
the skills that are um, more than often dormant. Um, mm. And you've got youth on your side and courage and ingenuity and an amazing team. So you're going to go far, young lady. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> so have you ever had, um, is there a particular book or person that you have that has inspired you over the years? I think I did ponder this and honestly, the first person, so I don't really read books, I must admit, I'm trying, it was I think every New Year's I have a resolution to get more into books. <laughs> I literally this morning put a bedside light next to my uh, bed so that I can start reading more without annoying Toby. But um, when I think about the person that inspires me, uh, two people come to mind. First is my mum, because she has always been so, like, literally, no matter what I decide to do, she will be all guns blazing, so supportive. Um, you know, she's really just, like, give everything a go. So incredibly grateful to have had that as I grew up but then also also incredibly close to me is my partner Toby so he's also um been on the startup journey uh he's he's got his own business called Mutu which highly recommend you go and check out um incredible full waste profile as well um but he's been doing that for about two and a half years now and he's always been so incredibly ambitious and always um, backed himself but now really importantly backs me and is being so supportive of me throughout this and obviously there's a lot I've got to learn and a lot I am learning but sort of every step of the way he's supporting me you know giving me advice connecting me to the right people um, yeah so he's been a massive influence on me and he's my business partner now so very lucky with that but yeah a huge influence on me both of those wow. people I mean there's lots of people but they spring to mind. <laughs> mm -hmm. Great when you've got someone who walks the talk, hey? Yeah, yeah, very lucky. Fantastic, <laughs> fantastic. So I'm, I'm guessing at your age, music is a great influence. So is there a particular yeah. type of music that you enjoy? Uh, I think for me, the whole thing with music, whilst, whilst I love it, and it's a, um, for me, it's actually around like being with my friends and um, sort of when I think about what music lights me up, I always think back to a festival that I went to in Budapest um, where I was surrounded with some of my best mates and all you know we had a week of the most incredible fun and so I think when I listened to the likes of Mumford and Sons and um, Dua Lipa and all these incredible people that we saw there it takes me back to that time and so that really lights me up so yeah I love listening there's a, a DJ called Perov Stella who every time I put it on I just can't help but dance and you know shake your shoulders so yeah I think music that I can sing dance to and that I can yeah see myself dancing with my friends is is the best. <laughs> Excellent, because I was talking, one of my interviews um, is Vida Austin, and she does a lot with um, about the intelligence of water, and I don't know if you've come across Dr. Emoto, um, and he did this experiment with rice, mm -hmm. and um, what he did was share some love with a bowl of rice, and another bowl um, he ignored, and another bowl he... Um, uh, was horrible too and said hateful things and the response um from these different bowls of rice according to the environment that they were in the loved one yeah. grew the worst one was the one that was being ignored because that went all black and yucky and soggy wow. and wow. the one that had hateful things it just slowly slowly decayed so um the reason i'm bringing this up is it's like if you're inspired in, um, yourself, it comes out in what you're doing. Um, it actually affects the work that you're doing, the way you come across and the food and everything else like that. So keep it up. Keep playing that music. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Do you have a favourite quote? I, I think so. I actually heard someone say it the other day and I was like, that is so helpful and that's exactly what I needed to hear. And it was whatever decision you make, you can change. And I, at first I was like, that seems flaky and it seems non-committal. And, and then I sort of pondered on it and I thought that actually just makes so much sense. And it's perfect for me at the moment because I've been having to make quite a few big decisions. You know, I've just left my full-time job to do a startup and the whole thing, I was like, there's always in the back of your mind, like, what if it fails? What if, you know, things yeah. don't work out or, and, but it's like, that's fine. You can just, commit to it whatever you decide go and give it 100 percent, and you can always change like it's it's absolutely fine to change so yeah that really helped me because especially at my age there's so many people and I was talking to a friend as well the other day who was having the same thing you know she kind of came out of university then COVID hit so all of her plans 
that she had decided then had to change and now she's sort of in a lost little limbo phase yeah and so I shared it with her as well and I said just don't overthink it go with your gut make a decision and then you can always you can always change I, so, yeah, I mean I, I said the same to my daughter she won a competition in fashion and she thought she might like to go off to uni um but she was incredibly sporty and there was an opportunity to do um like rope climbing and all this do like an um outdoor pursuit coach kind of thing and um I can't think of the words at the moment but she I said you've got youth on your side and she was hopeless in the classroom because she'd be really creative and create something and then she'd have to go back and do all the presentation and things like that which was really boring and I yeah. said you you can you always use those skills later and now she cuts up her, some of her old t-shirts and makes them into skirts for her three-year-old daughter and she doesn't have a pattern and it's sickening but amazing and um, but she's yeah. also had the opportunity to travel around the world and do all this other stuff as well so and like your recipes the flexibility um i think that's the thing it doesn't mean that you're nothing is set in concrete and you have to i mean there's um i think it was kodak was one particular company that didn't change with the yeah. times and they lost a huge opportunity in the digital world because they mm. actually stayed with the static photo kind of thing and so you have to particularly nowadays with the internet and everything else like that you've got to be flexible i mean like myself i'm an old crusty i had to learn how to do these online courses and podcasts i mean back in the day when i worked on radio we had a reel to reel machine and we had yeah, to right. really cut the reel and splice it and stick it together with tape and now when I <laughs> edit, whenever i edit something it, it's like control z undo that <laughs> so much easier <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah exactly yeah. now it's really easy to change it <laughs> absolutely absolutely so if I can do it anybody can do it <laughs> <laughs> no, so awesome. just to round things off if there was one thing you could change in the world what would it be and why yeah I think always my core has been around education um and educating as many people as possible and then combining it with my passion of nutrition it's sort of educating as many people as possible around the benefits of nutrition so it's like imagine you've got a petrol car you put diesel in it very quickly it puts out and spits a dummy and it's it's not doing what it's meant to be doing right it doesn't yep. reach its full potential and it's exactly the same with human beings if you're constantly putting bad fuel into your body you, how do you expect to be the best version of yourself? So it's so easy. It's such a fundamental thing that so many people don't get educated about. Um, and, you know, it's the core of everything because you've got much better mental well-being, physical well-being. Just your whole, whole order is much more balanced with good nutrition at the core. So, yeah, I just that's and I'm really fortunate in that menu aid we can we can start doing that we can start making that change and I think that's why the whole global ambition is massive for me as well because I've always been like I remember at university being like okay I've got all this awesome information in my brain but I don't want to go and sit in a hospital and just talk to one-on-one -on -one people yep. you know like I yep. want to impact as many people as I can and so when menu aid came along it was like this is such an awesome opportunity to be you know you're in people's kitchen like this is the most influential time and yeah, so it's the education around nutrition is is what I would what I would change. <laughs> and I think particularly at this time, the one of the important things is actually about building our own immunity and exactly. strengthening because the body is more than capable of fighting things off because of all the microbiome um in the gut. Um and mm. it's actually sustaining that health ourselves. Um and I think yeah. That's what the message, one of the key messages that needs to get out to people is like, take back the control and eat nutritionally, but that is an educational process. And by what you're doing, it's very affordable because you can buy less crap in the store and, and use that $4 a week to actually inform you um, and spend less spend less money so it just the whole thing makes complete sense and i'd just like to say thank you and wish you all the best for the future thank you so much it's been fantastic talking to you you've given me some great ideas that i've you know put down on my notes and i'll run away <laughs> with it like, so i really really appreciate it and yeah it's lovely to meet you <laughs> good good well there's no commission for the ideas it's okay <laughs>
<laughs> when you're world famous, it's all right, just remember me. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. No, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So you'll have to, um, uh, what was your partner Toby's business called again? Mutu, M-U-T-U. M-U-T-U. Okay. So I'll put all the show notes and links for people to actually connect you. So you'll have to um, prod Toby and say to him, I'd like to um, have an interview with him and um, do something on that side of things because it's, <laughs> it sounds amazing what he's doing. So, and I, I'm yeah. really, particularly for youngsters, it's really encouraging people to um, take that step and do something with their lives. And um, the way the world is going, is like everybody's been stumped in some form or other. And we've got to mm. take back the control and be able to do it ourselves in some way and work as a big community, really. I think that's the important yeah. thing. And as you yeah. say, your, your team, it's creating that team that has inspired each and every one of you and collectively and you know, all your customers and everything. So thank you mm. so much for your time, Elise. It's been much appreciated. Yeah, thank you so much. That was really fun. Cool. <laughs> awesome. See you later. Take care. I'm not entirely sure who my guest for next week will be at the moment, so you'll be in for yet another surprise. But I do know that um, I'm doing a hands-on workshop um, to design and build a tiny home. So I'll bring you all the news and things about that um, and an interview with the organiser Everett from Ever Homes um, the following weeks. So until then, dig deep, open your mind to a world of possibilities, live life with a generous heart and take steps to minimise waste and maximise your own potential.